Welcome to the Arendelle. I'm Chloe Lewis. And I'm Shelby Bishop. We are so happy to be back in school and behind the camera. Coronavirus, Black Lives Matter, upcoming football season, and much, much more coming up on The, the Arendelle. Arendelle. Directly from the Alma High School News Studio, covering news and sports from where it matters. You're watching The Air Day. Life may be hard and try to knock you down. If you have the right initiatives to succeed and keep fighting, you'll make it through alive. Strive for the progress of life, not perfection nor procrastination. Andrew Conister with more on the initiative for success. I'm sure you've heard the cliché boomer line, kids these days are too lazy. But have you ever considered that it may be true? Um, no, I think that if a student has a goal, they would normally want, um, they would be motivated to want to reach their goal and driven um, to find the proper things to reach and achieve their goal. There are plenty of intelligent students out there and in our own school that just don't apply themselves. Maybe they think it's a waste of time. Maybe they just don't care. I think that would be extremely um, challenging for those parents because they would want to push their students, but if the student isn't motivated, then they're normally not going to. Um, actually, I disagree because I feel like people are just now taking into consideration that depression is a thing and how much it affects your not only social life, but your academic life and your academic goals and how you perform in class, in school, or in just basically any social setting. Um, I think it can be frustrating for both sides because not only do parents tend to push toxic standards to their kids and the more they push the more the kids feel like they have to get out of that but also the depression plays an effect and the more I feel like kids who struggle with depression are pushed the more they just don't really want to do anything and they just feel like they can't so yeah. But I guarantee you that if you have a goal you want to achieve you won't do it without the necessary drive. Combating the lack of drive and tenacity in the classroom is merely the need to be inspired by your goal. If you do that, it will save you a lot of time and others around you a great deal of stress. Even if you don't get your high school diploma, just get your GED, it counts just as much. I'm Andrew Cronister with Airways Media. Thank you for watching. Masks, they're so itchy and uncomfortable, but are required by the governor of Arkansas. Over to Trenton Broyles with more on this story. Mask, they bother people a lot, but they are needed to keep school going and to make everyone safe. Um, I feel like they're they're kind of annoying, but I'll wear it if it's better for everyone and everyone's safety. You know, they're not comfortable to wear, obviously. You know, it's hard to breathe, especially when we're coaching. And I know it's hard on the girls uh, whenever they're trying to play and communicate with each other. But at the end of the day, if it's going to keep us safer, it's gonna, if it's going to keep us in school and on the court, then we'll do whatever we need to do to, to make that happen. Things have been different in class, but everyone is safe. Well, I feel like it's made everyone kind of quiet and maybe like scared to talk, um, like, you know, like speak up in class. And then it's kind of weird not seeing everyone's like, just their eyes and like no facial expressions. You know, in a perfect world. So if we're thinking back to how it was before, you know, I'd rather not wear it. But again, um, you know, if, it, if this is what we have to do to stay in school, to keep, to continue to be able to play, then, then I'll make whatever adjustment I need to make. I think, I think it's, it's kind of hard to like socially distant be socially distant um, in, uh, like in the hallways, but I feel pretty safe in class, like sitting away from everyone and wearing my, my mask. Students have found creative ways to celebrate and make things work well while still wearing a mask. Um, so I know that obviously it's an adjustment for all of us. Um, I think that they've done a really good job of making the change. I know especially with volleyball, um, so we went on a trip the other night to go play and they had to keep their masks on the whole time because the amount of number of kids that we had in the bus, they wouldn't, um, there wasn't enough space between us. Um, so I just think, you know, a lot of students are really making the change and really trying to be disciplined about it in order to kind of stay in school and continue with their sports and other activities. So I think they're doing a really good job of, of making the change and staying disciplined about it. So while we're on the court, um, the only thing that has really changed are our celebrations. So we used to, you know, come together in the court, you know, kind of put your arms around each other, being able to high five, being able to high five each other, but we're not able to do that anymore. So I've seen girls, you know, put their feet out and high five with their feet or do the elbows. Um, so that's been a little funny to watch. I'm Trenton Broyles for Airwaves Media. Every year, students are more and more nervous to go back to school, but with COVID-19, there is a new struggle to tackle. Over to Gene Alexander for more about those first-day jitters of, with COVID-19. 
Back to school is a welcome feeling for many people, including parents. But with COVID-19, going back to school is difficult for students, teachers, and parents alike. It was a little bit chaotic, just trying to figure out where everybody was, who was remote, who was in person, trying to make sure all the kids were in the right spot and that we were in the right spot and that just everyone was following procedures and being safe. I mean, it's kind of weird, especially with me being in a bigger school now because I was in Boonville and like we didn't really social distance there really so it's kind of new to me and this is like I'm kind of liking this school better and everything I mean the corona ain't really bothering me like, I don't really care for it like anything um, I think it was just people kept their distance more. Lots of times it's like people are hugging, talking to each other, excited to see each other back. And it's just like you had to keep your distance more. I think people were still excited to see each other, but you just had to be more cautious when greeting people. Even janitorial staff had trouble making sure everything was cleaned and sanitized for students and teachers. Well, I, they had a lot more work to do. They were having to get in and make sure everything was sanitized down after every class, especially like in the cafeteria area where my classroom, above where my classroom is. Um, they're just doing the best they can to make sure we're all safe and it's a good place for us to be. Some classes are struggling with COVID-19 and trying to make sure students and teachers are following the CDC's health regulations. My classroom isn't as big a deal. Um, I don't have as many in mine. We've been able to spread out. So for the most part, my kids can take off their masks because we're far enough apart. Um, some of the inclusion classes I am, there's a little bit more in there. So it's been harder trying to fit everybody in and still be distanced. Um, it takes a little bit more time to get started because you have to sanitize the desks with the kids coming in. Um, we're not doing paper copies as much, so we've had to change how we're teaching with all the Google Forms and stuff just to try and cut down on things that people are coming in contact with. This is Gene Alexander for Airwaves Media, signing out. 911, the number you call for help. What do they really do? How do they know who to contact and where to send them? Chloe Lewis has more on behind the scenes of police dispatchers. Being a dispatcher can be very stressful at times. So we have four full-time dispatchers and one part-time and then we have one dispatcher working at all times. Along with the stress comes many emotional situations. If you saw an accident happen out on the road and it was a bad accident, you're probably going to call 911, mm -hmm. but so are other people. So they may have 10 people trying to call 911 at the same time people calling the non-emergency number because they can't get through on 911 and that entire time that they're receiving all these 911 calls about this car accident they're trying to also get the officers the information so the officers can go they're trying to get a hold of the ambulance service so the ambulance can get going to the accident and if it's a bad accident they may need to get a hold of the fire department, have the fire department go. So the entire time they're answering these 911 calls, they are also trying to dispatch all these other agencies to the accident scene so they can get first responders there. And then that may not be the only thing that's going on in town at that time. They may have calls coming in about something completely different. With the stress comes many emotional situations. Uh, I've had several. The most stressful ones are usually anything involving a deceased loved one, whether it's a child or an adult. Hearing those calls are hard for anybody. They'll call for just random information that they may want to ask um, about things completely unrelated to the police department. I don't see a police department functioning well without a dispatch center. So, I'm Chloe Lewis from Airwaves Media. School activities have changed so much since 2020 has started. With all the new regulations, it makes team sports more difficult than it has been in the past years. Zachary Miller has more. Alma High School has been affected by everything that has happened from January 1st till now. So we'll be taking a look at how it's, everything has affected Alma athletes. Well, for me personally, it's obviously been kind of a uh, crazy road. Uh, it's been extremely busy so in January. Uh, I was already named the head football coach, but I was not working here yet. I was still at my previous job, but on January 16th, I came to work here. 
Uh, for the next two months, I spent uh, trying to get to know the kids, build relationships with the kids, with the football players, trying to establish off season, try to try to get around with the coaches, meet with everybody, make some staff hires, make some staff changes. Here's how the teachers felt about the quarantine. Being away from the kids and and April is just known for a really stressful month in the dance department just because of the dance show. Um, but it's a it's an awesome stress and it's a stress that pays off in big time whenever the show comes around and so to be able to not be with the kids with rehearsals and show and then for the end of the year the graduating class from the dance team and from the dance department was really super special for me. Here is how one of your fellow students felt when they found out that they can come back to practice. One of the summers that we got to find out that we got to get to come back and practice and be with each other and um, even though there were some things that we had to overcome with wearing masks and getting uh, our temp every day, we still just got to see each other and work with each other as much as we could. Here's some advice to get you through this school year. Everything's really chaotic, but I'm grateful because honestly, it can be so easy being negative and thinking negative thoughts, but the fact that we got to have our first day and uh, us, class of 2021, got to have our first day and just seeing that we actually get to come back and uh, see each other and just have the school year start is just a positive thing and it's something to be really grateful for. This may be a challenging year for everyone. I am Zachary Miller from Airways Media. The world is changing every day. One of the things that is changing the world so much is the Black Lives Matter movement. Everyone has their own opinion about the movement, whether they support or deny the act. Christian Subs has more. Over the past few months, there have been a few police brutalities that were very unfair, starting this year with George Floyd being brutally murdered by a police officer. I personally believe that all lives matter, first of all, but it's being misconstrued as the whole movement is being misconstrued as black lives are the only lives that matter and it's all lives matter but black lives have been and it's been a lot of uh, misconceptions a lot of uh, misunderstandings that they want to be put first when actually I think it's just that people just want to be treated the same the black lives matter movement was meant to say all lives are equal but was misunderstood as black lives are more important and that's not how it was meant to come off. It has sparked a movement where people are just tired of seeing it over and over again. It's been, uh, it's not just George Floyd, it was Breonna Taylor, it was uh, the, I mean, uh, you just go on and on down the list, but, but there's been a lot of people that have been unjustly you know, shot and killed. These people have families and their families have to deal with the aftermath of these things. And honestly, if the shoe was on the other foot, I don't think it would have taken this long. I don't think the, the, the process would have went this long. All in all, equality is something that everyone should do their best to strive for, for the future of humanity. I'm Christian Stubbs for Airwaves Media. Coughing, sneezing, high fever, sore throat, these are all symptoms of the coronavirus. Here's Noah McClennan-Hand with more on this very heavy topic. With COVID-19 affecting all of us one way or another, I wanted to ask a couple of questions to students and teachers about their personal experience. Originally, we were going to be having a family reunion at Double Ten, but COVID hit, so that didn't happen because it was hosted by the older members of our family really sad to not be able to see anybody face to face and just be able to talk to people through a screen so I missed everybody. Now that we know how it affected them personally what about the people that are close to them? But yes um, I have family who um, have a lot of medical problems. I have a cousin who was born with only one kidney and he's only three so if they would have got coronavirus then it could have been deadly. Um, I have one friend who lives three hours away by herself so she like couldn't go anywhere and she didn't have anybody near her um, so we tried to FaceTime every day but it still wasn't the same. This is Noah McClanahan from Airways Media signing out. Bees, what do they do and why are they still here? Lots of people don't really understand the importance of bees and what they really do. Brianna Langston has more. 
There are many wonderful insects in the world, and one of the insects is the bees. Uh, most of the time when beekeepers are feeding pollen patties or sugar water, it's uh, basically to help the bees out during a time of dearth or um, the lack of pollen and nectar, which happens typically around July and August. And bees help the environment, especially when it comes to pollinating plants. Uh, bees help the environment by cross-pollinating your flowers uh, to help them grow and bloom. Bees can contract diseases just like any other animals. Here are some other issues that can happen to the bees. Many, many colonies of bees could actually contract um, things called varroa mites, uh, which, land, which latch onto the body and end up killing the bees. They also have invasive uh, predators. Um, they have hive beetles and wax moths, um, and beekeepers can actually help prevent the death of most of your, your beehives. Bees are a benefit to people with flower beds and gardens. Uh, for me, uh, the benefits of having bees is a beautiful flower bed, um, a great garden, and not to mention all the honey that I could ever, ever want. There are many benefits that bees can provide for humans. Um, having raw honey from your local area actually helps with allergies. Um, it also helps keep the uh, immune system healthy, um, and it's good on toast. The bees are one of the most important animals that are on the earth. For Airways, this is Brianna Langston. Friday night and stadium lights. Alma High will be taking on Van Buren High School this Friday. Even with everything going on, we are so excited to say we have a football season. Bobby Taylor has more about the upcoming season. Here in Alma High, there are many sports kicking off their season. One of the ones that are kicking off is football. And there's a lot of a lot of different things that we're trying to uh, to implement uh, since I've been here. A lot of those have to do with the way we practice, the way we conduct ourselves on the field, uh, the tempo at which we practice, and we hope that uh, the way we do things at practice and the way and the way we practice and the movements that we go through will uh, reflect on Friday night in a positive way. With the new coach comes a few new changes to the team and the staff. The team is physically prepared for the season to do things they have to do to help them prepare and get ready for this season. Just a ton of changes. I mean, I made some, some staff movements, uh, you know, with some coordinator positions, and we brought in some new uh, ideas offensively and defensively and in the kicking game that we feel like will uh, will uh, play to our favor with the type of kids that we have, and uh, we're going to see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Um, we've worked out pretty good. Then the conditionings have helped us to get through, push us through the fourth quarter. Most of the players have been playing team sports for years, and the new pandemic going on has caused them to be more distant from their teammates. Having to wear a mask, uh, you know, during different times of the day, that's all different. You know, team sports, they've, they've all grown up. They're 16, 17, 18 years old, and they've grown up playing team sports, and you always got to be next to each other. You always get to high five. You get to hug, you get to be next to, to each other in a huddle uh, without a mask on. And so all that's changed. And so now, uh, you know, we have to kind of get onto them for those kinds of things. So that's definitely been a challenge for them. They can't, it's hard to conduct yourself like a football team or any type of team uh, with these kind of guidelines. The Airedales treat each team to play the same no matter how good they are or bad they are. They treat them equal to anyone else they would face. Probably Greenwood. But we'll treat every team the same, like they're not bad at all. This season off with a bang and have a great season. For Airways Media, this is Bobby Taylor signing off. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our social medias at Airways Media. And as always, by the wise words of T Mac, remember, go, go Airedales. Airedales.